Welcome to the Catalyst Sale Podcast. Whether you are a sales professional, not in sales, but interested in helping people solve problems, or a founder CEO who is looking to grow your business, you'll find practical tools, stories, and experience you can apply to your role. I'm your host, Jody Mayberry, and as you would expect by now, I'm with the founder of Catalyst Sale, Mike Simmons. Hello, Mike. Hello, Jody. Okay, Mike, you and I are both hockey fans. I don't know if I'd say I'm a sports fan. I only pay attention to one sport and one team within that sport, but we often, you and I, talk about hockey quite a bit, and I know you pay more attention to sports, and I've I've heard people do some comparisons of how sports applies to business and sales and that sort of thing, and I thought, well, it'd be kind of fun. I know Mike is is into sports. So Mike, can we do an episode where we kind of bring sports into business? We absolutely can. And actually this past weekend, I went out golfing with the kids. I'm trying to do that more often. So I think we've got some stories that we might be able to to weave into this. Oh, well, that works out really well. I actually didn't know you were a golfer until right now. I am not a golfer. I aspire to be a golfer. I think it'd be great to find more time to get out and play and one of these days I may I may be able to do that. But right now our goal is to get out once a month. I think over the summer we may even be able to get out there twice a month, but that's our goal. Now when I was in college, Illinois State University, I discovered to my absolute delight that you could take sports classes for college credit. I took bowling, I took golf, and I took advanced golf. So there was one brief moment in college where I thought, if I'm going to be in the business world, I need to get good at golf. And so I was giving it some attention, but I have not played golf now in, oh my goodness, 15 years, 12 years. It's Well, been now you've long. got me wondering, what's the difference between golf and advanced golf? I can't tell you. I don't remember. But this is what was wonderful is that you had to play. Part of the course was, yeah, you would learn about golf, but then you had to show the instructor that you played so many times during the semester. So you had to go play and bring your scorecards back because that was part of the course. There you go. Nice. Yes. I have in my golf history, I have one birdie. One birdie. One birdie at the Madison Golf Course, Peoria, Illinois. That is awesome. Over the, uh, ov- over the, uh, the weekend, one of our kids, the 16-year-old ended up birdieing two holes. Okay, you're rubbing it in now, so we should just move on to the lessons. The, 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 I did not. I, however, did not birdie any hole. I okay. missed a couple of birdie putts, which uh, frustrated me, but yep, you move on. Yes, you move on like we're about to. <laughs> like we are about to, yes. <laughs> so let's look at that then. What are some of the lessons you've learned in golf that do apply to business and sales? Well, I think, you know, we've talked about this before, but don't let the last shot beat you. And, you know, it comes into, you know, things like baseball as well. Don't let the last strike beat you or, or football. Don't let the last penalty or the last flag beat you. You've got to be able to compartmentalize and move on. You've got to be able to, to move ahead. There's nothing that you can do to change what happened in the past. You may be able to correct some mistakes that have happened in the past. You may be able to iterate, learn from those mistakes and apply that knowledge at some point in the future. But there is nothing that you can do that will change the events or the sequence of events that have happened at some time before this individual moment. Unless you figure out the, the way to do time travel and you get yourself a time machine and you find a DeLorean and you can go 88 miles an hour and, and work your way back in time. But you know, barring that, there's nothing that you can do to change the past, but you absolutely can influence the future. Well, I have been looking for a flux capacitor. That's good. And I, you know what I, I and I think in the Avengers movie, spoiler alert, but I think they said that the, the, um, you the stuff that happened in Back to the Future wasn't correct that there's actually it's the quantum realm. So maybe oh, we all man. evolve. So it's no Back to the Future and Hot Tub Time Machine are all old school thinking. We've now moved to uh being able to navigate through the quantum realm. I have not seen Avengers Endgame yet. So hopefully you didn't just spoil the whole thing for me. I probably just spoiled the entire thing for you and everybody listening. Oh, Mike. This is a disappointing <laughs> moment in Catalyst Sale, but we, we should just move on to your next point. 
yeah, there's nothing I can do about the past. So we move on other than <laughs> with an edit button, we might be able to edit some of that out. But so I think you're getting things back to the, the point at hand. You know, golf is one of those games where you can plan a couple of shots ahead. You can, if you, let's say you're on a 300 yard par four and you can hit your three wood 250 yards or 275 yards, and you feel pretty confident that you're going to do great with a 50 yard shot into the green or a 25 yard shot into the green, hitting that three wood becomes a, a pretty interesting approach. You're now breaking that 300 yard hole into smaller parts that you can execute on. The reality and the, the better play for someone like me might be, maybe I hit my eight iron 150 yards every time I hit it. I probably would be better off hitting an eight iron for the first 150 yards and an eight iron for the second 150 yards. But for whatever reason, we don't feel comfortable teeing off with an iron. We want to pull out the three wood or we want to pull out the driver. We want to pull out these longer clubs and then take it from wherever we are next. I think the point that comes up there is be careful about how you rush into things. You know, There are multiple ways for you to play each hole on a golf course just like there are multiple ways for you to navigate a sales cycle, navigate the interaction that you have with your customer base, navigate the discussions, navigate the meetings that you participate in. All right. This is good. I'm, I'm, I do this often, but I'm taking notes as, as we go along. This is good stuff. Well, take us on to point number three. So point number three it can always get better. So here's the, the story from uh, this weekend's round. Our 13-year-old is having a really rough round. He's having a bad front nine, starts the back nine and says, this is going to be the best back nine, best, best nine holes of golf you've ever seen. So he's really confident. He's optimistic. He starts out with a couple of bad holes and he's really getting frustrated. Gets up to this next par three. And I think it was the fourth hole on the back nine, but he gets up to or fourth or third or fourth hole. He gets up to this next par three, swings away and gets a hole in one. Oh my goodness. The smile that he has from ear to ear is absolutely priceless. I mean, and all of a sudden this bad round turned into the most amazing round ever because now we've got a kid who is really anxious going from the tee box up to the hole to confirm that the ball is in the hole. And it's a relatively short course. So it was a par, par three when we were playing a, a, a kind of an executive course that so had a combination of you know, par threes and a couple of par fours was sprinkled into it. But goes from down to all of a sudden on cloud nine after hitting a hole in one. Uh, Jody, knowing that you've had one birdie in your life, I would imagine the answer to this question is no, but I'll ask it anyway. Have you ever had a hole in one? Does miniature golf count? Miniature golf does not count. No, I have not. But I can tell you if I had, I would just drop my putter. My putter's named El Guapo, by the way. I would drop my putter and walk off the course. So the beauty of a hole of one is usually you wouldn't have to take El Guapo out of the bag. Oh, that's true. Well, miniature golf. I, <laughs> if I got a hole in one in regular golf with El Guapo, something went terribly wrong or terribly right. I don't know. Something went terribly wrong or terribly right. But so, so here's the other cool part about it. And it's not outside of school to, to share the, how the hole in one happened because we didn't get it. It didn't get it on video, but it was literally a line drive shot that was kind of like he thinned, he hit the ball thin, so caught it uh, with his iron a little thin and ran the ball up onto the green and into the hole. Nobody cares how that hole in one happens. However, the experience of getting that hole in one is something that's going to you know, we'll sit with him. Hopefully he has many of these. I've never had a hole in one. And you know, I've played golf on and on for a number of years, but I've, to this, with the exception of uh, some miniature golf, I have never had a hole in one. And this kid who was having a tough round all of a sudden just lifted up to cloud nine from getting that hole in one. So I think the point to take away is this too shall pass. At any point in time, you can create or have a very positive set of events change the situation that you're in. So don't get so down, don't so downtrodden on the sequence of events that you're going through right now. Take a step back, assess the situation, and start executing and move you, yourself, and your business forward. So that's, uh, I think, another important lesson to learn. Don't let those other things continue to beat you and know that 
the situation can turn really quick. Man, what a great example too to have a bad round and then just and I and have a hole in one. It will change everything. I felt the same way being a hockey player, just to feel like not only having a bad game, but you can just be having such a bad stretch and it's all erased with one goal. All erased with one goal. And yeah, how many times does that bad stretch just continue to get perpetuated over and over again each time you hit the post? Mm -hmm. You hear that haunting ring. Yeah. So take advantage of what you've got in front of you. Stay focused, move forward and continue to go through those reps. And we've talked about this in the past around getting out of a rut and getting out of a slump. I mean, these are some of the techniques that you can use in something like golf and will apply also in business. And one of the things that you can do is have a mental trigger to get yourself refocused. You could have a triggering statement. If you've ever seen the movie Tin Cup, one of the triggering statements for Kevin Costner's role in that is uh, dollar bills. And he'll say dollar bills and then he'll swing and hit a shot. So have your think about how you might be able to create that triggering statement or triggering event either before you go into a customer call or before you get on a video call or before you respond to an email or before you take a shot just to help get yourself refocused. Yeah, so good. That's, that, that's a great one. All right, what do we have next? So I think the other one is just remember that it's a really long game. It's a, and you know this is starting to become repetitive, but you know, in golf, you've got, you could either be playing nine holes or you could be playing 18 holes front nine or, or, or playing the full course, there are going to be ups and downs. If you look at my scorecard from this weekend, you would see a number of triple bogeys where I was three over par. You'd see a number of holes where I shot par. Didn't see any birdies. Unfortunately, I didn't have that kind of a round. But there's this ebb and flow in this kind of seasonality that will happen over the course of events. Think about how that impacts the your business and how over time you're going to have different experiences. But if you can establish some clear guideposts, some clear guiding lights, a spectrum that you plan to operate in, you can ensure that you're constantly moving forward. I'll give you another example. We, we went from hole one to hole two to hole three to hole four to hole five and all the way through the sequence. We didn't find ourselves back at hole number one. So identify this sequence, create those gates and use those gates to help yourself determine success and progress and how you're getting closer and closer to the either the end of the game, the end of the quarter, the end of the year. Very good. Very good. Now, I don't know if if I should admit this. Maybe it's cool. Maybe it's not. I still have the golf ball from my birdie. You should absolutely still have the golf ball from your birdie. I have still have the golf ball when I broke 100 the first time. I have a golf ball from when I broke 90 the first time. I have a golf ball when I broke 80 the first time. And I know Andrew will have uh, his golf ball from his, uh, from his hole in one. And, and he'll have the scorecard that shows the couple of times where he was uh, three or four over on a, given, on a given hole. There are only three sports mementos like that that I have. The first hat trick, which is three goals in a game, the first hat trick I ever scored. Yep. The birdie golf ball and the first and only goal I scored in college. I those are the th- I have that puck too. So the three that I have, that's it. Where do you keep those pucks? Oh, they're just down in my man cave in a box. <laughs> you didn't mount them someplace and put them up on the wall someplace or leave them in the freezer or anything like that? No, no, didn't didn't do any of that. Maybe someday they'll come back out. I think, you know, as we wrap up here, another key takeaway when you start ta- applying, and, and these apply re- regardless of sport that you're talking about. I know in this instance, we're talking about golf, but, you know, Jody, you talked about El Guapo. And you know, El Guapo, if you're hitting a hole in one with El Guapo on a, on a par three, you, I think you brought the wrong tool <laughs> to, the, to the problem, or you brought the wrong tool to the equation, or brought the wrong tool to the tee box, right? So another thing that's really important and I think a direct application between golf and business is realize that you have a number of tools that you can apply to each of the problems that you're looking to solve. Uh, you can use a hybrid, you can use a pitching wedge, you can use a putter, you can use a driver, you can use various irons. 
let the club do the work. Let the tool do the work. Don't become so laser focused that you think that, hey, I've got this big hammer and everything around me is a nail. Or every time I get up to a tee box, if it's if the hole is longer than 250 yards or 275 yards, I should be hitting my driver. I should be hitting my three wood. Break things down into those smaller components and figure out what tool applies to the specific job that will lead you to the best outcomes. Toward the end of the round, one of the things the kids were doing more and more of is putting from off the green. Now, we live in Arizona. So putting from off the green this time of year when everything's really dry and hot is a smart thing to do. You don't have to worry about hitting your chip shot thin or hitting a chip shot fat or taking too big of a divot. Uh, You can putt from, and some people, I think they call it out in Texas, the Texas wedge, but you can putt from a decent amount of pace off the green. Your objective is not to, your objective is to get the hole or get the ball in the hole in as few strokes as possible. That doesn't mean that you've got to hit the ball in the hole with every stroke. So make sure you use the right tools for the job and know which tools you should be testing. Well, this has been a great tie-in with golf. And there really are lessons you can pull from business or from sports into business. Now, if we were doing this on lessons from miniature golf, which I am a Viking when it comes to miniature golf, one of the items we would pull over is trash talking. But I don't, you know, I do that in miniature golf. I don't think it really has a place in sales though. You don't, you probably shouldn't trash talk, but I do take advantage of that in miniature golf. Yeah. Well, I, I think it does play a role, especially if you're trash talking in your own head. I mean, think about what some of that negative self-talk can do to you and get you off course. So you know, Jody, I know you're, you're, you're joking here with the trash talking and there was definitely some trash talking on the course, even with the kids. And there usually is trash talking on the course, but Be careful that you're not falling into the trap of trash talking to yourself as you work to get out of a slump if you happen to be in one. See, that's how good you are, Mike. You even found a way to tie that in. And I think we we owe it to people who listen to the Catalyst Sale podcast to someday have a face-off in miniature golf. We absolutely owe it to those uh, those who listen to the podcast. And there we were in Orlando together not that long ago, and the idea didn't occur to me. But next time, it's going to happen. So will you travel with El Guapo? I never have. I'll use a house club when I have to, but you're in trouble if I do have El Guapo. Okay, Mike, this this has been a great episode. I'm glad you humored me with all my talk of miniature golf and El Guapo, but This has been great. As we always say, if you want to join in on the conversation, find us on social media, ask a question, make a comment about an episode, and tag us so we can join in. Mike, give us where we can find you on social media so we can start the conversation. Best place on social media is going to be uh, Twitter, Simmons underscore M. You can also find me on LinkedIn. I'm just Mike Simmons on LinkedIn. If you do a search for Mike Simmons and Catalyst Sale, I should pop up. And you can always continue the conversation at CatalystCell.com. The live chat goes directly into our Slack instance. And that is a great way for the listeners to share questions, comments, and keeping with the theme of this discussion, I'd love to hear how you apply lessons learned in sports to your role in business. All right. Wonderful, Mike. Thank you so much. And thank you for listening to the Catalyst Sale Podcast.